Every Pokemon game starts with a rival, a professor, and a question. That question you ask? Well, what is your favorite color? Of course, it's a bit more complicated than that, which looks the coolest, the cutest, which is the optimal for breaking the game during a Nuzlocke. However you enter this question, this little dude is your best friend. But what if you can make your best friend cooler, or cuter, or more optimal at breaking the game? Well, now you can. This is Pokemon Infinite Fusion, the fan game with over 175,000 different Pokemon combinations. And we're here today to see if we can beat a hardcore Nuzlocke using only starter fusions. That means if a Pokemon faints, it's considered dead. The level cap is the next leader's ace. No active items can be used in battle, and we're going to be playing on set mode. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure you like and subscribe. It really helps me out, and I would really appreciate it. So the way we're playing this Nuzlocke is I'll start the game with all 14 starters, including Pikachu and Eevee. I'll be catching one Pokemon per route, and I can't unfuse them with any of their new partners. We're also going to be playing on modern mode, not only to expand our pool of available Pokemon, but the trainers, bosses, and gym leaders are much more difficult, have new types, and have much better move pools. This is also my first time playing on modern mode, so honestly, I don't really know what to expect. So let's do this. And if you enjoy modern mode, you should check out when I streamed this game. I played this one first, but obviously the stream came out first. You know, it's a whole thing. We grab Charmander as our starter starter since he was my original back in 1998, and Scorsor doesn't give us much trouble. Now, for our first encounter over on Route 1, we actually grab a Fletchling Azuril Fusion for a 2 for 1 special. Taking Azuril, we go ahead and fuse with our Charmander, and look how nervous our boy is! Such a cutie. Next, we go ahead and fuse Fletchling with Piplup, and this little Blue Jay is beyond cute. Over on Route 2, we grab a Ralts, and we go ahead and fuse it up with Torchic. And also, I love his little haircut. This guy's cute too. Over on Route 22, we catch and fuse Eevee with a Duskull, and it isn't fair how many Duskull fusions are so cool. Grimer's over on Route 22 talking to the League Guards, demanding that they let him in. He keeps on asking if they know who he is. When he sees us in the distance, he runs over, challenging us to a battle. Starting off with the Shinx, we send in our Ralshik, and after a couple of embers, this puppy goes down. Out next is Eevee. Once again, it's easy enough to take care of with our Psychic Bird. And then after the battle, Grimy skulks off into the forest. Now that we're in the Secret Garden, we go ahead and grab ourselves a Riolu Pichu Fusion. The funny thing is that this planned on being my fusion anyways, and how I get access to Nasty Plot, so that's even better. Over in Pewter, it's time for us to take on Brock. In modern mode, he realizes that metal is stronger than rock, so now he's a Steel-type trainer. Let's see how this goes. Trumiard is his first Pokemon. We go ahead and take it down after a couple of Nightshades, but since we're seated, we are not in the most ideal position. Swapping into Ralchik, we resist Steve Jr.'s confusion and start spamming Ember. After some back and forth, we manage to take it down easily enough, and we earn our Boulder Badge. On Route 3, we go ahead and grab a Togepi and fuse it with Trico. This little guy is adorable. And while he isn't super strong right now, I am really excited for what the future holds. Outside of Mount Moon, Nurse Joy is taking care of this injured Geodude. Brock takes this opportunity to try to impress her because the only thing harder than this rock is his body. Joy says she needs about five minutes to get ready and goes back to the Pokemon Center. And I'm pretty sure Brock is still waiting outside for her to this day. Heading into Mount Moon, or Azumander goes ahead and evolves into a Mamander, and I'm sure he's just happy to be here. Next, our Ralchu goes through a major growth spurt, evolving into a Raubuskin. Mamander, not wanting to be shown up, evolves again into Mameleon, and Pilu goes ahead and puts up his Dukes, evolving into Pikalu. And Prindling evolves into a Prindfinder. Togeko goes ahead and evolves into a Togevile. Finally, grabbing a Moonstone, our Doovy evolves into this kind of goofy, but still cute, Durian. Working our way through Mount Moon, we find Team Rocket. They've stolen all the Moonstones in an attempt to create the first triple fusion. Seems kind of cool, but it's probably evil. After taking care of this rock nerd, their experiment fails, and the Rockets pack up their stones and leave, which honestly is kind of rude. Before, ta Before taking on Grimy over on Nugget Bridge, we welcome Picario to the team. Mameleon evolves again, and I love his huge ears. Awesome combination of cute and cool, and the color scheme, perfect. Grimy's over on Nugget Bridge bragging about how many Pokemon he's added to his Pokedex. Like, that's even what this game's about. He sees us over in the distance and he wants a rematch. Without giving us a chance to respond, this fuzzy little puppy attacks our bunny lizard. As Emelian takes it down with one huge powered Fire Fang. Solovy takes a little bit more work, but after he heals up, it only takes a few chomps to pop his little fox bubble. Minar manages to hold on because of a Focus Sash, but it and Phoebus both get KO'd and we move on to Bill's house. Over at Bill's house, we discover that he's performing a fusion between himself and a Rhydon. The experiment's a success. He realizes that his hands would be far too big and strong to hug any of the people that he loves and asks us to help reverse the situation. And to this day, it still bothers me that I don't know where Rhydon went. Prepping for our next gym battle, Ral Buskin goes ahead and evolves into a Kree Buskin. And this hairdo. Missy is an ice type trainer in modern mode, and I know her ace is a Lapras fusion, so this could prove pretty difficult. 
Glorogue is a pretty great fusion, but with a huge power flame charge, it's more than enough to take it down. Manras comes up next, and we go for a Rock Tomb to lower its speed, as we take a pretty big hit from Bubble Beam. Another hit brings it way down to the red, but now we're too low, so we go ahead and swap into Durion and go for a Confuse Ray. Trading back and forth for a while, we get hit pretty low, but a Priority Stab Shadow Sneak avoids any potential fatal attacks, and the Cascade Patch is ours. Grimy is also on the SSN. I'm not sure what he did with Bill to get those tickets, but he looks a little ashamed of himself. Wanting a rematch with his upgraded team, he goes ahead and challenges us. His evolved cotton pupper goes down in one hit, and I really hate that this thing has focus search. Sylvie so takes a hit pretty well, but he doesn't take advantage of the situation and just kind of powers up, so it and his lava fish both go down pretty quickly, and we prep for Surge. Surge is a fighting type trainer in this mode, which makes sense. Again, I only know what his ace is, but this thing is a monster. Noski comes out first and we go for a flame charge specifically to get the speed boost before following up with the play rough to get the KO. Out next is his Houndlaid, and this guy is wicked. We miss our first play rough, missing again, but the third time is a charm, and he and Flesh Chop both go down, and we earn the Thunder Badge. Skipping ahead, we grab a few more friends on our way to Lavender Town, and into Celadon to get some stones, and our game corner encounter. We go ahead and evolve Picario into Ryario. In Pokemon Tower, we find Grimy with a candle, praying at one of the graves. I'm not sure who died, because it's party lineup hasn't lost anybody, so I think it's some kind of threat towards us. Whimsixio is adorable, but same thing as last time. Okay, Axion, dude, calm down. Duo V is a really cool sprite. I really love what they do with the EV fusions with this line, but this fight goes as it always does. I gotta say, Blue's modern mode team is already shaping up to be really, really cool. It's a really great set of Pokemon. It's just too bad that my bunny's so damn burly. D-Rocket's on the other side of the room yelling at this old guy. When he won't give them what they want, they force him upstairs to do God knows what. We try to follow them upstairs, but there's a ghost at the door and won't let you pass unless you're wearing a special pair of goggles. So we head back to Celadon to try to buy some. After checking the department store for goggles, we head over to Erica to ask where we can get some. When we tell her why, she exclaims the Team Rocket must be stopped and guides us into the sewers of their secret bases. While fighting our way through their secret base, at some point we fused our Bulbasaur with an Aaron, and I totally forgot to show it. I'm really, really sorry. But I'm also really scared for this Giovanni fight at this point in the game. He already has some wicked Pokemon in classic mode, and I am a Raid. Setting up a Leech Seed, we take huge damage from two Sludge Bombs. After hitting it with some rocks, we go ahead and swap into Ryario, going for a Thunderbolt KO. And what the hell is this thing? And of course it has Protean. Swapping into a Durian, I hope it goes for another Ghost move, but of course it doesn't, as I get smashed for huge damage. Needing to cut down its attack, I go for the burn, and then healing up after getting hit again. I kind of just go back and forth with this thing for a while, healing up before I go for a Shadow Sneak of my own. Giovanni heals up, and I go for some Feint attacks. We swap back and forth between healing is needed until this guy eventually goes down. His next Pokemon is Smeargar, but this is a lie, because it has Dark Pulse, and it takes out my first teammate of the run. Oh, Durian, you were going to be my special tanky boy. I'm sorry, buddy. Sending an Azumuli on, we go ahead and take a Dark Pulse, so Play Rough knocks this guy down deep into the red, and I knew it was a Zorik. Not wanting to risk my most powerful Pokemon, I swap into Togevile, assuming I can take a few hits, which we do, but the stupid thing U turns out before I can kill it. Now, as this real Smeagar comes in, we go ahead and heal up with our wish. It hits us with a few hexes until it hits us with a few hexes as we put it to sleep. After setting up another wish, we manage to take it down with some moon blasts. Once we manage to get another hit off, we finish off his final Pokemon, and with that, Giovanni and Team Rocket are forced to leave Celadon, but not before giving us a very spiffy pair of goggles. This gym is great, it's full of sexy women. Before taking on Erica, our pre-fighter revolves. Don't worry, it gets much cooler. In modern mode, Erica is a bug trainer. I love how all their types are just kind of like turned on their side a bit. And Typher? Oh my god, this is awesome. And Aquatail Oko is this bug, and excuse me, Galvanicon. After taking a pretty big hit, two flame chargers managed to take out this big guy. Buttergees? Barely holds on. And after getting healed up, we managed to take it out. And with that, we earn our rainbow badge. As a million hitting level 36 during the gym battle, evolves, and this might be my new favorite Charizard fusion. He just looks like the friendliest dragon you've ever seen. It turns out Mr. Fuji's the developer of the original Master Ball back when he worked at Sylph, and Team Rocket needs it for whatever bad stuff they have planned, so we need to find a way to get into Saffron and stop them. We find a Snorlax blocking our path, so we play a song and it wakes up and attacks us. And Janine lets us know that her dad runs the gym over in Fuchsia City, and badges take precedent over stopping terror attacks in a major city, so let's do this. 
On our way to Koga, Togavile falls into this goofy guy. And I told you my bird was going to be cool. We all take the time to fuse Squirtle with the Sloth we call over on Route 6, and after fully evolving ourselves, we got a Danky Kang. Next, our Venerod evolves into a Venagron, and I am a huge fan of this one. Koga is the master of darkness in this universe, a fitting type for a ninja, and I bet he has a Zoric. Hey, look! A Zoric! Wee Flame is a pretty cool bird, so after healing up a few times, we managed to take it out, but now we're getting a little low. Hans War, have you seen this vest? We're just for the content, we hit it with a play rough, and it survives! And oh my god, 2 HP! That was close, as he swaps into the real Umtara, and we go and switch into Venagron, going for a Leaf Seed. Swapping again into Blast King, but then Aqua Tail does big damage. Healing over the wish, he swaps into his Bird Lady, and Danky KOs both of his remaining Pokemon in short order. And we get our Soul Badge. After saving all the Sylphon points from Team Rocket, we discover that Grimey's been hiding in a broom closet outside the President's office. Apparently he was there trying to get some Master Balls of his own, but once Team Rocket showed up, he was too scared. To prove to us that he's tough enough to help out, he goes ahead and challenges us to a battle at the literal worst possible time. Whimsoray is now fully evolved, and it's wicked awesome. Hey look, he survived this time! After doing some big damage with the Volt Switch, Frogun comes out, only for us to get a little rough with him and just barely missing out on the KO. A Rock Tomb finishes things off, and we go ahead and take out the Pupper as well. Not sure why he went for the pure Psychic type, but I love the design. Two Aqua Tails take down his starter, while we get knocked down to about 40% with a Hyper Voice. Lampsol is a really, really cool Pokemon, but we're able to make quick work of it while taking minimal damage. And Magdic uses this opportunity to kill us by poisoning us, so it goes down in two turns as well. Nino is his final Pokemon, and we are way too low, so we go ahead and send an Empiflame, and an Exodus does very little to us. A Fly does a lot less than I was expecting. Beat up at this point is going to be a problem. Going for another Sword Stance probably is what saves us as we manage to get a crit with Surf, ending the battle. Grimey agrees to help us fight Giovanni, figuring that maybe he'd be able to get a Master Ball as a reward. We find Giovanni arguing with the self president regarding Master Ball production. We bust in and Grimey says something fairly offensive about his mother, and a double battle begins. This battle can be pretty difficult regardless, but I'm honestly a little bummed that it's just his normal team. Ryros gets taken down low, and heals back up as our Denki gets slapped down wicked low as well, but we manage to take it down. Swapping into our egg, I try to go for some drains, but I forget that Primarino has poison jab. We were so close to our vinyl form. This really stinks. Sceptile is one of my favorites. Swapping into Venagron, we see Sand Queen as Eevee takes care of Kangaskhan. A Razor Leaf does basically nothing since this guy's part poison, but Rurion gets a lucky crit, and we're able to end the battle, forcing Giovanni and Team Rocket to leave Saffron. Now that we have access to all the non-elemental evolution stones, we go ahead and fuse our Aegislash with a Swampert. Sabrina's a fairy trainer in this universe. I know her ace, but the rest of her team I have absolutely no clue. And oh my gosh, it's Evolosion. It goes for a Moonblast, lowering my special defense as I risk a Swords Dance. On the next turn, we get pretty low, but thanks to our Barry, we're in an okay position as I barely fail to take it out with an Iron Head. Knowing she'll heal up, I swap into Azumazard and go for a Speed Boost Aqua Tail combo for the KO. So cool! Drift World does some good damage to us thanks to Aftermath, but we managed to take it out without much of a problem. Now, this thing. If it wasn't for my Flame Charge, this thing would be like impossible to deal with. But without much effort, we're able to get the win and earn our Marsh Badge. Now it's time to head towards Cinnabar. Blaine is a Psychic type trainer now. Honestly, I think he should have been Dragon, but whatever. He sends out Kling for Reg, and I'm kind of into this Android Giraffe design. Setting up a Sword Dance, we failed to take it down in one because of its Focus Band, but after healing up, our second hit managed to get the KO. Xano is pretty neat, but the same thing happens here, two hits. Token Nucleus? Okay, why do all of these Pokemon have Focus Bands? Volcano Badge is ours. Next, heading over to Mount Ember, we find that Giovanni's gathered all three legendary birds. And not only that, the Triple Fusion Machine is fully operational. He uses the three birds into Zap Makuno, a Pokemon so OP it can take three attacks in a single turn. With it, he plans to take over all of Kanto, and it's up to us to stop him. We start off with Venagron going for a Rock Slide, knocking two of them down to about half. We manage to hold on going for a second, KOing both Articuno and Moltres. Nice. Zapdos also flinches, allowing us to sweep this bird Hydra in three turns. 
This might be my new fastest. Back in Viridian City, it turns out that Giovanni was the missing gym leader the entire time. He accepts our challenge, and it's time to earn our Earth Badge. Giovanni's team focuses on the normal type, but this guy ain't no Larry. Gekon is a really cool design, and our Danky manages to knock it down to one thanks to a Focus Sash, and it turns out it's his Ocean. After some back and forth with some heals, eventually he turns into Qcon, and come on guys, this is just sad. Two which managed to take it down, but now we're really low. A totally 100% Kekagon comes back out and fakes us out as we swap into Empaflame. After a surf, we managed to finish it off. Polylurk is so cool, but oh my god, he has Discharge. We swap into Age of Bird to avoid the Discharge and go for a Swords Dance, but an EQ brings us into KO range, so we swap into a Zumazard, who also takes huge damage. I'm kind of in a bad spot with this thing, so I swap back into our bird as we heal up, but a Discharge, Try Attack, Combo, KO our bird buddy. I don't know what I was expecting, but at least now I can get a clean swap. Metagron comes in and also gets paralyzed. At least we managed to get our lead seed off as a Petal Blizzard does some good damage. After another one, we managed to take it down and the real Kekagon comes in. We seed this guy as well and our attacks do pretty crappy damage, but at least we can keep ourselves topped off with lead seed as we take it down. Okay, why does Smeargar have Quick Claw? It's already fast. And now that we're low, I swap into Age of Pert. Doing some big damage, it looks like we can get a two hit KO, but then this guy puts us to sleep. And a Hex brings us down to 21. But lucky for us, we wake up and end the battle. Finally, our Earth Badge. With our eight badges until we need to replace Empaflame. Fusing Hydragon with Infernape, we get this really cool, like, Goldar evil monkey thing. Somebody tell me what it's a reference to. Grimey, who now also has eight badges, is really full of himself and challenged us to a battle. For Menace comes out against our Dragon Monkey, and we managed to take down his first two Pokemon pretty quickly. Magtic comes out third, and we swap into Azumazar, but after a couple of Thunder Punches, we take the beast down. Briorion comes out next, and I love that the stones are part of the design. Going for a play rough, we take it down pretty low as he gets us pretty low as well, activating our berry, but a thunder punch finishes the little guy off. Lampfile is fully evolved, but it and Ninard both go down in one, and we can make our way over to the Elite Four. Before heading into the challenge, let's go ahead and take a look at our team. First, we have Hydronape with Dragon Pulse, Close Combat, Crunch, and Flamethrower. Blast King with Hammer Arm, Thunder Punch, Aqua Tail, and Slack Off. Azumazard with Thunder Punch, Play Rough, Flame Charge, and Aqua Tail. Ryario with Aura Sphere, Thunderbolt, Flash Cannon, and Calm Mine. Aegipert with Sacred Sword, Earthquake, Iron Head, and Swords Dance. And Venagron with Petal Blizzard, Earthquake, Rock Slide, and Leech Seed. I looked up the types of the Elite Four members, but I have no idea what any of the Pokemon they have are or what Grimy is going to have for the champion battle. First up is Lorelei, who's a Water-type trainer, and her first Pokemon is Apollyon. I set up a few Calm Minds while taking some damage and managed to get the Oko on her first two Pokemon. You've got to be kidding me with the Spear of Muku. Assuming this thing is going to have Inner Doubt, I attempt to take it out too to reduce the damage, but I mess up, not thinking about her heal up, and I manage to KO myself in the process. Setting out Age of Proceeds out, Mulatina, excuse you. Switching back into my ape, a Dragon Pulse does some good damage as a Hydro Pump forces my berry. Not sure why she doesn't heal a second time, we managed to take it down on the next turn. King Drio comes out next, afraid as a flying move, I switched to my Venagron, and good thing I did. Four Drill Packs managed to take us down a lot lower than I thought it would, but after two hits from us, she's down to her last Pokemon. Okay, this is the best all sprite ever. We knock it down to basically nothing as she heals back up, but this time we manage to get a higher roll and we go ahead and take it down, defeating Lorelei. Bruno's up next and he swapped out his rock hard muscles for rock hard rocks. Sending out Tyra Flame, he goes ahead and sets up stealth rocks as we miss our first Aqua Tail, but managed to nail it on the second. Cray Ray obviously has Storm Drain and sets up a stockpile on top of that. A hammer arm does big damage, but a powered up Thunderbolt gets us down to about half. Swapping into Age of Pert, he heals up, and an Earthquake takes it down. Probodon? That's a phase only a mother would love. An Eruption takes us down really low, and an EQ gets him even lower. He heals back up, and we manage to get a higher roll, but still not the KO, so we swap into Azumazar to go ahead and finish it off. Marorier is a wicked sprite. A huge power stab, quad effective, Aqua Tail somehow doesn't 
KO. And our starter starter is taken down by a boomerang. How is that even fair? Venegron comes in to avenge his brother, and the Octostar comes out in response. And I'm sick of all of these focus bands. Armatops is his final Pokemon, and luckily, one hit is all we need. Moving on to Agatha. Agatha swaps her ghost for the stuff that makes ghosts, and Clefairade has a lovely bouquet. Agent Bird comes in with an Iron Head, and after she heals up, an EQ connects to get the KO. Next is Dust Plume, and this thing is cool as heck. I assume it has Levitate, so I don't go for Earthquake right away, but after an Iron Head fails to get the KO, go for it, and it turns out I was wrong. Shandabrock is so awesome. I really need to do a Chandelure run at some point. Uh oh. More like uh oh. It sets up a Minimize, and two Iron Heads do some big damage to it, but a Sacred Fire gets us down to just 9 HP, and we're burnt, and I have to watch my Frog Knight die. Blast King comes in and manages to connect with an Aqua Tail for the KO. Koros is very nervous, and I don't blame it because Danky is huge. For some reason, I use Thunder Punch, and then I swap into Vengron going for the KO. Her final Pokemon is Omzing, and this could be really annoying if I didn't have Leaf Seed. It does manage to poison me, but after a couple of pain splits, I go ahead and swap into our Ape. A close combat does big damage in a second one, manages to take it down, and now only Lance remains. After swapping some moves around, it's time to face off against Lance. He sends in Togeflame, and I love this thing's design. And Orosphere does pretty decent damage to us. We go back and forth between heals and thunder punches until it eventually goes down. Yo, Septodactyl, he is so happy. Swapping into Venagron, and Iron Head does some good damage to us as I manage to toxic it. And follow with a Rock Slide for the KO. Okay, Dark Knight is not even a flying type, but this thing is awesome. Oh, come on, why is it a blizzard? And now we're down to two Pokemon. Sending in our ape for one close combat, man, it's the one shot it. Shandamori, I assume, is probably fire flying, so a thunder punch from Denki managed to get it down really low, and we end up getting flinched and then burn before we can take it down. Dabla is pretty cool, and uh, of course I'm asleep. We wake up after one, and a flamethrower managed to take it down. And then we only need two to take down Aegemass. And with that, we're heading into the champion fight. But with only two Pokemon. So all four Elite Four members have solid teams with great fusions to cover their weaknesses. And I assume I have a pretty good idea of what Grimey has based off of our fights in the past. But I'm about to see why I'm wrong. And why he needed all those Master Balls. And then Sharp comes out first in this stupid Focus Sash. And Iron Head does huge damage to us. But luckily, the Sash only works once. Okay, Tordorneon? Why does he have a triple fusion? I am completely thrown. And this is the second Pokemon. What the hell? I swap in the Danky, only to have a close combat take me down to half. He leaps back up with a slack off. He uses Giga Drain, and I start going for Aqua Tails, taking about 30%. And of course, his Flare Blitz spurns me. Oh, cool. It has Scald, too. Now I'm basically doing nothing, so I swap in again, and he heals back up to full. I go for a close combat twice as he uses the rest of his potions, and this is literally my only move. Hacks of Menace is fierce, and now my attack is lowered. I swap back into Blast King, knowing I can't do much, but I need to shed my lowered defenses. Down to my last Pokemon, a Dragon Pulse doesn't even take it down. And now I'm at 32 HP. A second hit managed to take it down, and what an Arceus's name is this? You were telling me that you caught God and then fused it with a dog? Close combat brings it down to about 30% as my final Pokemon goes down. And with that, we lose. I don't know what to say. We haven't lost a run before, but here I am at the end of this video not the champion. I need to do this challenge again. This travesty will not come to pass. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure that you like it. Make sure you subscribe, because I know most of you aren't. It'd be really cool if you did. But we'll catch you next week for the next Fusion video. Leave a comment down below and let me know how your day's going. Thanks so much, and I'll catch you next time. See ya.